Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create this background foliage. You can use this to create a shrub, a small tree, or even the branches on a larger tree. So let's get started. Simple shrub. Draw the outline of a shrub. You can draw a simple rounded mound or a wild thing like I'm doing. Next, use the shader of your choice and burn circular motion along the pencil line. It doesn't matter if you burn past the line. It also doesn't matter how wide you burn the circular motion or how light or dark the burn marks are. All you need is to be able to see the burn marks. Then rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Now burn in the shrub to give it a base color. I am using the flat of the shader and circular motion is my burn stroke. Since this is the base color, you can vary it to give the shrub shape or just fill it with a semi-uniform color. You can make it as complex or as simple as you desire. I am choosing to add some darker areas here and there to represent shadows. This will help give the shrub a little more visual interest. Another thing to keep in mind is that the darker the shrub is, the further in the background it will seem, and vice versa. Paler colored shrubs will seem closer to the viewer. Switch to a writer pen tip and burn tiny but open circular motion. Open circular motion means that you can see the base color we just burned between the loops on the circular motion. Let the pen tip meander around as you burn. Don't burn consecutive rows of circular motion as that would produce lines on the shrub. The black box in the upper right corner has a demonstration of the burn stroke that I am using. Since it is being burned on bare wood, it is easier to see what I am doing. This layer of circular motion adds texture, but if you like how the shrub looks without it, then don't do this step. I like to have a variety of options so that my foliage does not look the same in every piece of artwork. It is also handy to have variety if you have more than one shrub in your artwork. Just like we did with the base layer of color, you can burn this layer of circular motion to a semi-uniform color, or you can incorporate variety. I am choosing to create variety. I'm building on the highlights and shadows that were created with the base layer. When creating a shadow or darker area, just re-burn over that spot with the same circular motion burn stroke. Small tree. This one begins the same way as the shrub. Use a pencil to lightly sketch in the small tree. Then switch to a shader pen tip and burn in the trunk and branches on your tree. I did not try to create a bark texture. I just kept things very simple. Afterwards, create the foliage on the tree using circular motion. This is the exact same process we used when creating the foliage on the shrub. Right now we are creating the base layer of color. Once I started burning over the pencil marks, I decided to change the shape of my small tree. You may have noticed I didn't burn around the outline and erase the pencil marks first. Instead, I'm just burning in the tree. I point this out because I want you to be aware that the exact order that the steps are done in doesn't really matter. Use a pencil eraser and rub over the area to remove any residual graphite. Then switch to a writer pen tip and burn the tiny open circular motion over the foliage. As always, you are in control of how light or dark you make the foliage. It is also up to you if you want to create shadows and highlights. Basically, this can be super simple or slightly more complex. The only thing that I will mention is that the further in the distance you want the tree to appear, 
the less fine detail it should have. Or to put it another way, the further back you want the tree to appear, the fewer shadows or highlights it should have. If it's a really distant tree, I wouldn't put in the gaps in the foliage like I did with this example. Depending on the setting that you use this small tree in, the tree could look like a small tree or a small shrub. It could even look like a large tree that is far away. Tree Branch Draw in your tree branch and foliage patches. I am working on a test burn for a future project. I'm near the top of the board, so it's easier for me to work on it if I rotate the board. That's why everything is upside down. The tree branch is being filled with curving wide burn strokes that vary a little in color. This texture is the same one that I used on the trees in David Denton's winter scene that I did as a Christmas postcard. There is a tutorial version of that available, and that covers the tree texture in great detail. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I will have a link to that video in the description below. Next, use the flat of a shader and burn circular motion along your pencil lines. It is okay to burn past the lines. Once you're done, then rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Burn over each patch of foliage to give them a base color. Use circular motion as your burn stroke. This is the exact same technique that was used on the previous two examples. You can make the patches as light or as dark as you prefer. Also, it is up to you if you want to burn them to a fairly uniform color or add a bit of variation. Either way you decide will look good. Once the base color is in place, then switch to a writer pen tip and burn the tiny, open, circular motion. It is okay if you burn past the edges of the base color. The overburns will look like stray leaves that are sticking out here and there. With the foliage patches, I tend to make the tops of the patches lighter in color than the bottom. I pretty much did that with all of these examples. My reason is that the light would be striking the tops more than the bottoms, and the bottoms would be in shadows. Mostly, I am trying to incorporate a fair amount of tonal variety into the foliage. That said, I will remind you that you can burn the patches to a mostly uniform color. It is your artwork, so customize it to your preferences. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you liked the information and found it informative. I thank you for watching my video, and I will see you next week. Thank you again for watching my video. If you liked the video and found the information helpful, then please subscribe to my channel. That would help me out a lot. Well, thank you again, and have a great week.